Good morning everyone. Well today is a very exciting day because today I'm off to collect the car that replaces my Porsche Cayman that I sold recently. And when I did the announcement of selling the Cayman, you might recall that I had a specific set of criteria that I wanted the replacement car to have. That criteria list included having a removable roof, having a paddle shift gearbox, being able to do 0 to 60 in under 4 seconds, yet being able to be affordable to run. And I'd like to thank the people who wrote in to me and emailed me with some suggestions, which included the Aerial Atom, but of course the Aerial Atom, you can't remove the roof because it doesn't have a roof. Um, and also uh, a lot of popular ones were the Porsche Boxster 718 and the Jaguar F-Type. Um, all of which are pretty close but didn't quite meet the speed category. So, I found something. We're now going today to collect that car and I'm getting a lift from a family member who also happens to be a big car fanatic and two times cup winning hill climb racer, Rod Wheat. Now Rod doesn't know what this car is either, so this is going to be something of a surprise to him too. Here's the video, hope you like it. Hope you agree with the choice of car. We're in Rod's car and we're on the way to go and collect my car. And um, this is where Rod has to admit that he doesn't like Porsches very much. True. True. Why, why is it that he doesn't like Porsches? We're, we're on the way and the excitement builds and we just keep going gently right it's not uh, there there we're here we are here oh, really? you see it says motorsport on there yeah it does doesn't it eh? and you'll also notice rod what what does it say on there Lotus. oh i say you've changed it again it, it's odd that you should say <laughs> <laughs> that i don't keep my cars very long because you have and i am so relieved that you said that you preferred the Lotus to the Porsche. <laughs> Did you get this V6 one? Well, have a look, have a look. Uh, we go, go down this way, because that's the workshop. Here we go, folks. <laughs> you were going to like this. <laughs> you can imagine how much I'm sweating. If it's here, that would be cool. Black wheels. It's got black wheels. It's got to have black wheels. But better. But better. <laughs> Get it to drive it home. Yeah, I didn't tell him. I did just quickly. I know what it was. I've never been in this Porsche. No. It's such a short time. Okay, folks, here we go. The first journey in the new Lotus V6. And uh, just 
just finding my feet here. Make sure we've got everything in place. So, foot on the brake, into drive. Right then, here we go. We're gonna go for it. Whoa, it feels good to be back in a Lotus. Oh yes. It really does pick up this car when you put your foot down. The feel compared to the uh, Porsche Cayman is just so much better. The first few miles in the uh, in the Lotus Exiges V6. I think where the benefit of this over the previous Exige is the fact that it is a much more comfortable seating position. I've got the flappy paddle gearbox as well um, because I can now take it easy, let the car do the work and uh, just sit back and drive it. So yes, yep, it's, uh, it's good. I can't wait to get this car out on a few country roads. At the moment I've just got it in normal touring mode or comfort mode, whichever Lotus call it, so there's no sports exhaust enabled or anything like that. Or well, I'm hoping that this car, although unlike the previous Exige that I had, will be a lot better for going some distances in. Um, because uh, it should be a lot more quiet and comfortable to drive when it's in this touring mode. This car, I am happy to say, is very affordable. It's still under warranty anyway. It's fantastic to drive. And not only that, it still does 0-60 in 3.8 seconds. It is good to be back in a Lotus car. And I have to say, it does basically say to me that I am a Lotus person. I don't know what it is, um, whether it's down to the raw sort of track feel or the way that's set up or whatever it is, I don't know quite why, but I think that people tend to be aligned to certain types of cars. And for me, I've now realized having had a number of different cars like the M3, I've had a BM M3, I've been lucky enough to have a uh, RS4, uh, the Porsche Cayman that you would have seen in my previous video at the start of the year. But they don't have that X factor that this Lotus does. And keeping in mind that this car is not even a year old, so um, if we have any issues, anything crops up, I shall keep you posted on anything that may crop up with this car in terms of the ownership of it. Now you remember I said I would keep you posted on any issues with this car. Guess what? The engine management light has just come on. I don't believe this. I am one mile, one mile from the dealer folks and the engine management light has just come on. Well, I've just tried turning the engine off, turn the engine back on and uh, the engine management light is still on. It's probably worth pointing out that um, although the engine light's on, uh, it's, it's running perfectly okay. I haven't noticed any issues with it, so I don't know um, why the engine light is on it. I'm hoping it's just gonna be a minor sensor problem. It usually is with stuff like this. 
That's what I need to get. Oh, it's here. Uh, behind the um, behind the ballast stand. So that, so that goes into. I've done that. Let me just slot myself back in the car. So you can unplug it now. Are you unplugging it yet? That's that. And now the big the big question is, will it? Oh, that goes. So that's a little cover for it. I've just been back to the Lotus dealer who uh, plugged the car into the interrogation system into a fault code detector and it appears it's something to do the fault was something to do with the uh, exhaust emissions reading coming out the back of the car so luckily it wasn't anything serious and he's uh, pressed a few buttons on his laptop and he's cleared the faults and once again the uh, lights are all off. Well, so far so good and we're on some good roads. Let's press the small button. just put uh, not a lot I put 20 20 UK pounds worth of fuel into this car and um, it's three quarters filled the tank so here we are we're uh, moving along at a nice steady 70 miles an hour and uh, bang on 2,000 revs so it's obviously 
the uh, pretty efficient car to be driving this, I think. We're on the motorway, it's just a little bit noisy. Definitely noisier than the Cayman was. But I guess that is what makes this all the more exciting and deafening. Done about uh, 70 miles in this car now and we're almost home. But I have to say, the amount of attention that seems to be attracted to it is uh, quite scary. Um, I mean, it's the same colour as the Cayman that I had, and the Cayman didn't draw virtually any attention at all, very little. Um, but this thing, so many people are sort of looking at it, winding their windows down. I've had four people wind their windows down to look at it. I'm just wondering, maybe I should have got it in black. Yeah, at least we got back in one piece. Uh, without any more engine lights coming on. So uh, that's great news. And now we're gonna pop her back into the garage. This is where we find out whether it actually fits into the garage. And it does. It's definitely a lot bigger than the previous Exige. You can tell by the amount of gaps. <laughs> 